Repop. That is the name of the magazine that I created. Short for repopulation. Thinking ahead of the times when the human species needs to find a new planet because we screwed this one up. Um, totally a sci-fi magazine. Um, I had some fun uh, creating this, but it really is merely an uh, example of how one might initiate the publication process of a multi-page uh, project in InDesign. So I'm basically creating the project that we're doing for our final in this class, which is a magazine, mini magazine, with a cover, a little article on the inside, and then a back page with an ad advertisement. So if I zoom out, you can see that it's a four-page project. We have a cover, we have the article on the inside, and the advertisement on the back. If I look at each of these pages um, uh, independently, here's our cover. There's um, the first page of the article, which is on the left side. And then we have the right side continuation of that article. And then in the back, here's the advertisement. And this is really the culmination, um, like you saw in the previous video, of all the different tools and assets that we have been striving to try to master and get control of. So you know, I talked about this ad being a composite of images in Photoshop with new vector um, elements in Illustrator and then, and then produced into this page layout in InDesign with a logo and some some type and some other graphics. So um, if we start off looking at the cover page, I just want to talk about how these things were actually set up. Um, it's an image that I pre-processed to make sure that it was appropriate for my intentions. And what I'm talking about here is that it's in Photoshop uh, a raster image that has the color space of CMYK and is an, uh, a file of 300 pixels per inch resolution and in, as far as inches go in its physical dimensions it is a 9 by 13.5 which means it's definitely big enough to fit in the document that I've created for InDesign, which is an eight and a half by 11. So that first image that is the background is how I started. I laid that in, I placed it, um, scaled it so that it was appropriate, and then I started to build on top of that all of the, the type elements. And if I look at the type elements, we're broken down into a title and a subtitle volume and issue number and a date. Okay, this is pretty much standard stuff for most magazines or periodicals. It may change depending on uh, who you're looking at as far as examples go, but it's kind of up to you how far you want to take it. I have a few teasers for different articles that or elements that will be found within the magazine. Okay, so there's three of those text elements and that makes up my cover. And when we get into the meat of the article, I called it space combat. And we have we have some you know typography for the title. We have um, the body copy for the article itself, supporting graphics and photos on both pages. So here's like different combat masks or hoods, whatever it was I found. And then over here is that photo that we talked about in the previous uh, movie where I prepared this 
in both Photoshop and Illustrator. And I gave it that nice cut line, the diagonal in Illustrator with a mask, created some graphic uh, colors for the edge of it, and the dotted line going from eye to eye. And then on the very back page, the Photoshop composite, the Illustrator composite with the logo, and then the type consisting of, um, again, kind of a title, some body copy, and then some peripheral information of like a, a Twitter and a website. So really very simple when you break it down into those elements. But what is important is all the prep work and all that prep work for the cover, for this element here, the imagery of the battle that's going on, and on the back page, this composite and the logo. Everything here was created with the intention of being published for CMYK. So if you were to investigate any of these assets and see how they're built and created, they will all be consistently CMYK 300 pixels per inch and at least 100% in size, if not smaller, because some of them I overscaled just so that they could actually fit and go to the bleeds and whatnot without any need to enlarge them. Because when you're in the, in the print world and you have to enlarge graphics, especially if they're raster based, that's when you get into trouble. So there's just the first setup for this, keeping in mind the, the, the flow and the progress of elements. In the next piece, we'll actually get into how did we make it, how did we create styles, how do you do text wraps, and um, so on. Okay.